We're in Shanghai talking about total solutions for translational medicine for China and the world. It's another progress report. We're back in Shanghai at the second annual symposium for clinical and translational medicine. And I'm with an expert in this field, Professor Marco Varga. What are the key requirements in terms of getting us into the future and the reality of what we can do with translational medicine? I think translational medicine is, is key. Going from lab bench experiments and to predict those in man. So everything that you can provide in terms of validity, information and data that will give a higher rate of attrition, that will be also very important. Having said that, right now there is a major activity globally as well in the biobank areas. In Sweden we are currently now building fully automated robotized units where you will have almost up to 100 million samples in a, in a time period less than a decade we hope. Wow. So what you're trying to do is to get collections of patients so it can be tissue, blood fractions, white blood cells, red blood cells, etc., in order to really fine-tune to see how does that link in two different parts, because you are unique, I am unique, you will respond to treatment, mm -hmm. side effects, safety aspects, and all of these you can line out. But if we collect in archive, and then I mean really high-density archive, mm -hmm. fully automated robotic treatment, this is the direction future is going. So you're really talking about integrated workflow solutions. Can you share an example? I'm currently responsible for biobanking of uh, clinical studies that they are longitudinal. They go over five years. We're going to generate almost like 10 million samples. So when you do that, you actually need to have a workflow that is well set. So you actually go from a small volume of 100 microliter you generate the blood and you aliquot. So in principle, you will have an archive of all these samples within a minus 80 freezer, but you need to have all the steps being integrated together. So that means that this little tube that you have might not seem too much, but if you correlate then all the data, so that means medical history, birth, uh, death registers, you also have family links, and all of this, all of a sudden, gives you an enormous additional value. So what you're looking for is really correlations. I've been around to most of the biobanks, the big ones in the world, US, Asia, Europe, around. And what I've seen is that there is not one that actually has a quality determinant. So that means that all the samples they store, they do not know the quality of these samples. So the protocol gives you what you should have but nobody really checked it. So the idea that we have is to be able to have a QC control of the sample going into the biobank, but also to provide the data coming out from the biobank. So if you store it for one day, one week, one year or 20 years, you should know exactly what quality that you will be working with. So in this respect, I would say that we have uh, currently frontline activity that we believe will be very important for the future. Discover more ideas and innovations. Visit thermoscientific.com.